please uh, help me welcome Miss Pastor Abby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm speaking out of you. Listen. Come on, somebody. If you guys, can you guys extend your hands? We're going to pray for Abby. She's going to deliver God's word today. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for Abby, Father God. I just thank you, Father God, for the message that you put on our hearts, Father God. I just thank you, Father God. I pray even right now, Father God, soften hearts that you have given her, Father God, so that it could grow on good ground and produce a seed, Father God, and fruit in every single one of our lives, Father God. I just thank you, Father God, that the way they, we all walked in today, Father God, we're not going to walk out the same all because we had an encounter with you, Jesus, Father God. So I just thank you, Father God, for boldness and confidence right now over my sister Abby, Father God. So I just love and I praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Bring it. Pastor Abby, huh? That goes to show you don't have to be a pastor to be a pastor. Truth? There are pastors that are hairdressers. There are pastors that do bagging. There are pastors that do all sorts of jobs that are in our hospitals right now. You, you don't have to have a pulpit to have a pulpit. Amen? All right. So if that's holding anybody back, be free. Be free. Amen. All right. That was harder than I thought it was. Hurt my hand. Okay. All right. Today I'm going to be talking about encountering hope. Oh, wait. I want to talk about Pastor Justin real quick. Yeah, Pastor Justin is having a good time being refreshed and encouraged. I encourage us. This is a great opportunity to pray for our pastor. He has time to rest and reflect and hear from the Lord. So let's, let's pray for him right now. Lord God, we just send a word to our pastor. Lord, we thank you for covering and protection over him and Katie and the kids, Lord, right now. And we just pray for dreams. We pray for open visions. We pray for downloads, divine appointments, favor, 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 that he's going to come back fired up, charged up, ready to go. Lord, we thank you for him, praise you for him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And it's good for our pastor to take a break. We don't have to have one person. We don't need the priest to go do our little thing. Okay. We can all go before the throne. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to read a scripture for us. Um, my, my message today is called Encountering Hope. Um, you can look up in your Bibles or your devices. And that was phenomenal today about the devices wherever she went. Thank you. That was good. Thank you for obeying the Lord. Um, so 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. So you can just check that out. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version which a lot of people say that's the women's version because it has extra words. We like our words. Give us more words. And I think that's okay. I like it. So, all right. First Peter 5, 6 through 11 says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service and at the appropriate, at the appropriate time, casting all your cares. Say, all your cares. All your anxieties, your worries, and your concerns once and for all on him, for he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Be sober, well-balanced, self-disciplined, and be alert and cautious at all times, because that enemy of, your, of yours, say the devil, the devil. is prowls uh, around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour, but resist him and be firm in your faith against his attack, rooted and established and movable, knowing that the same uh, experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. We can see that today, huh? Yeah. Throughout our world, there's suffering happening. You do not suffer alone. After you have suffered for a little while, say a little while. A little while. Say it again, little while. a little while. Say it in faith. That the God of grace who imparts his blessing and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. To him be the dominion, power, authority, and sovereignty forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us this morning. Lord God, we just thank you. Wow, your presence has been here so strongly this morning in worship and in the offering. And God, we're just so grateful to be able to gather together here this morning. And Lord, we just pray right now. Put your hand on your own heart. Lord, we just pray. Prepare our hearts to hear what your spirit is saying, God. Let our hearts be good soil, ready to receive it, Father. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, for a spirit of revelation this morning. That Lord, we're not, Like Pastor Justin says every week, we're not going to leave here the same. But we're going to be transformed by the word this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I love it. So, interestingly enough, uh, a few weeks ago, we, me and my husband, we decided to go on a trip. His brother was getting married in Idaho. And so we thought, well, let's do something a little different. Let's take an RV. 
you know, when you look at the website and all, all the happy families on there and those, those spaces, it looks huge in there. They give you like a little, what are those, 3D view. You walk around and they're like, wow, we, we could live in there forever. We could move out our house. This is so nice. And we got all our stuff. And so we kind of basically went into it really naively. <laughs> Thinking, this is going to be easy, right? So we get in the RV and it is crazy. Let me tell you, I've got two kids that are toddlers and it was like the Thunderdome in there, Okay. <laughs> Like, seriously, I was like, what were we thinking? And so every day I had to get saved again. And every day me and Alex needed to recommit ourselves in our marriage to go, okay, we good? We're good. Okay. Because literally it was that crazy, you know? So it's like one of those things you think, oh, it's going to be easy. No, not easy. But interestingly enough, in the midst of all that chaos, we were on an assignment. We felt like the Lord told us to go to the wedding. Uh, and because his brother doesn't really know the Lord and the gal he was marrying doesn't know the Lord because we felt like we needed to be there to support the family. And so it's, isn't it interesting when we're on our way to an assignment of the Lord, how all hell breaks loose. (laughs) I mean, literally Alex, the first day of the trip was like, should we not go? (laughs) This is a 10 day, 10 day trip. You people like seriously. And I was like, oh man, I pushed him that far. We went that far already. It's only day one. Okay, Jesus, we need you. But literally, we went there. It was an amazing time. Can I tell you? Like, we got to minister to his stepmom. We got to minister to his grandma and to, and to the couple that were getting married. And it was just phenomenal. They let us pray for them. Um, and it's just so cool because in those moments, it's like you, it's, it's so easy to get trapped in the lie that, well, I didn't even pray this morning. I was just in the Thunderdome right there. Like, I can't pray for people. I can't act like I'm saved and love people right now, but literally that's where God can move the most because we just go, God, this is you because you know what happened down in there, okay? (laughs) Like seriously. So I encourage us, when we feel the most, uh, what do you call it, unable to do something, unqualified, that is the perfect time for God to use you. That's when you step up to the plate and say, okay, Jesus, shine, shine right now. So we got the opportunity to pray for them, and literally it was just so neat because you know when you're around people, and they must not get a lot of people that speak positively in their life because they're literally like just clinging to you, like hugging on you and loving on you. I'm like, wow, okay. You guys are nice here in Idaho. Okay. No, because it's literally the presence of God that's like drawing people by his love because clearly it wasn't what I was doing in the RV that was drawing them. I'm sure they heard me yelling while the door was shut. I don't think those are soundproof. They really need to think about that. So um, anyway, so we got to pray for her, and it was so cool because God's presence was there. And after we prayed, she's like, man, you gave me goosebumps. And I was just kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, just being silly about it. And she's like, no, no, you really did. And here it's like we got to invest in the lives of these people. They're just starting off their life. They're a new couple. And we're able to invest God's love and his goodness in the midst of that. Isn't that amazing? Um, so I would say, I think you would all agree with me that the last two years have been pretty intense to say the least, <laughs> right? Frustrating, hard, confusing. We've had our, the COVID thing going on, lockdowns, racial divide, jobs lost, and even loved ones passing away. So really heavy, hard things. And then of course the political mania, we do need a Thunderdome and just put them all in there, <laughs> fight it out. Who survives? Jesus. Yay. You know, kind of thing. <laughs> That, we solved it, guys. Let's write our senators. Okay. Um, but literally, it's just been like mania. Yeah. You know, and we'd be lying to ourselves if none of us were ask, thinking like, Why, where are you, God? <laughs> what is happening? Right? And honestly, I think a lot of us have lost hope. Right? People have lost their businesses. They've lost their marriages. They've lost everything in the midst of all of this. You know, we, we can lose our hope about our health, our, our finances, our relationships, our future. And, um, you know, I believe that God said to me today that he wants to restore our hope. Right? It's interesting because about this whole season, it's nobody's been untouched. Right? All of us have experienced some sort of difficulty in this hour. You know, it's interesting because I, I grew up in church. I tell people that I was born on the pew. <laughs> My parents were pastors. So church was a lifestyle, and I'm so very, very grateful for that opportunity. But something I also realized in the church as a whole, in our nation, sometimes the idea comes across that, well, you'll never go through stuff in your life if you get saved. That's a lie, (laughs) right? Your life will be great. Just come to the altar, sign your name, you know? (laughs) No, (laughs) 
right? It's a pretty rude awakening when you realize, okay, I got Jesus, my life has changed, and that's amazing, but then, oh, all of a sudden, wow, I'm still going through gnarly stuff. And so that can really kind of cause us to have some questions about what, what that's all about. But the good, good news is that in the midst of that, we have comfort knowing that Jesus is with us in the storm, right? That's the difference between us and the world. We're all going through the storm, right? We're all in the same situation in many ways with this whole COVID everything. But we've got Jesus with us. Right. Amen. Um, I love the story in Mark 4, uh, 35 through 41, where it talks about Jesus in the sea. So it says in th- verse 35, on that same day when evening, evening came, he said, let, them, let us go over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. So leaving the cow, look at the cow. There wasn't any cows there. Crowd. They, uh, maybe there was, I don't know. They took him with them, and just as he, he was in the boat and the others in the boat with him, and a fierce windstorm began to blow, and the waves were breaking over the boat. And so it was ready, already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, sleeping with his head on uh, a pillow. Isn't that amazing that the Lord tells us he was sleeping like he was really relaxed. He had a pillow. And they woke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are about to die? These are fishermen, right? So clearly they've been in this storm before. So if they're freaking out, it's not like, oh, we're rocking a little bit. Jesus, you know, <laughs> it's serious. So they're asking for his help. And he got up and sternly rebuked the wind and said to the sea, hush, be still. And the wind died down and as it had grown weary, and there was one, there was at once a great calm. Whoo, we want your great calm, Jesus. A perfect peacefulness. And Jesus said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith and confidence in me? They were filled with great fear and they said to each other, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So literally in the storms of life, Jesus is in our boat, right? Always. He's never leaving. He's not like, okay, I'm going to take a vacation while you guys do this 2020 thing. I'll see you in a few. You know, like he is right here with us. And it's important for us to note that he didn't cause the storm, right? He was with the disciples and he got them to the other side. When we go through our trials in life, we have the comfort that the Savior is with us. Amen? Amen. That we're not alone in the storm, and not only will he get us through, but he will take us to the other side. We will get there. We will make it. You know, it's interesting, like my story of the RV, which is pretty funny and silly in a lot of ways. These disciples were on an assignment, right? God told them to go. He didn't tell them it was going to be a storm, but he told them to go, and the storm still hit them, right? But it didn't prevent them because they had Jesus in the boat. So we got to remember, just because we're following the Lord doesn't mean we won't get storms. It doesn't mean we're not going to get where we need to go. Amen. Amen. So Jesus never promised us we wouldn't face storms, but he promised he would be with us in the midst of the storm and lead us to the other side. Matthew 28, 20 said, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstance, regardless of our circumstances. Amen. And on every occasion, even to the end of the age. I mean, if we look through all through scripture, I don't know if there's anybody in the Bible that didn't have trials. Right? We got Jonah, you get your whale. Children of Israel, you got Egypt going on. You got David versus Goliath. (laughs) Everybody had a trial, even though they were called. Like, no, you're called, Joseph. You're going to be one of the greatest in the land, and then you're in a pit forever. You know, kind of thing. Like, everybody had to face their trial. So we can look at their example that this is normal Christianity. Right? Proverbs... uh, 13.12, 13.12, which is such, I think this is really key for this hour, because I feel like the enemy's biggest, like, desire is to rob us of our hope. So it says in Proverbs 13.12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire comes, it is a tree of life. I love the message version on that, too. It says, unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn life around. Jesus is our good break. In John 10.10, 10, it also talking about, oh, sorry, I wanted to say this. The enemy's assignment is to make us lose hope and lose sight of who the real enemy is. We can see that, right, on social media. There's a lot of enemies happening right now. <laughs> and the enemy's in the background laughing, thinking it's hilarious. So we got to remember. John 10.10 John, John 10, 10 said, the thief comes only in order to steal kill and destroy, I, this is Jesus, came that life, they may have enjoy life and have it to abundance till the full, till it overflows. Amen. And Jesus warned us. He let us know ahead of time that these things would happen. 
In Matthew 24, it says, At the time, many will be offended and repelled by their association with me and will fall away from the one whom they should trust and will betray one another, handing over believers to their persecutors and will hate one another. Man, there's a lot of people that hate each other right now. Many false prophets will appear. I think sometimes our media is a false prophet. And mislead many. Because lawlessness is increased, the love of many will grow cold. I really think he's talking about Christians there. When lawlessness increases, all these people are disagreeing me about whatever it may be. COVID, vaccinations, this mass, whatever. That literally our heart gets cold as we engage in those arguments. I'm not saying to speak, not speak truth. But when you start arguing with people and the goal is for me to be right and you to be wrong, that's not where we want to be. <laughs> Amen. So, um, oh, I love this part. Verse 13. We have hope. But the one who endures, say, I'm going to endure. And bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. This is the good news of the kingdom. The gospel will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end of the age will come. Can I tell you, we are the greatest hour for the gospel to be preached. And I'm not saying you have to go get out your soapbox and let's go preach, you know, Jesus, you're going to hell, you know, not that. Anywhere we go, like when we went on our trip from heaven, we went on our trip. <laughs> we take those opportunities to pray for people. We take those opportunities to pay for somebody's gas. We take those opportunities to give somebody a hug, right? We look past all the junk. It's just a distraction to keep the enemy from loving us or loving. Oh, he doesn't want to love us to keep us from loving people right? It's a distraction. So we want to push that back and let Jesus in. Amen. Amen. So what are the, some of the results of losing hope when something bad happens? You know, a lot of us don't want to be honest about this, but we get angry with God. Why are we here? Why did this happen? Where are you? Right? Let's be real. God wants us to be real. He doesn't want us to be fake and pretend that we've got our church face on all week because we know we do not. Right? As soon as that door closes at our house, bah! you know, it's serious. I'm not the only one with a Thunderdome. Okay. Let's be real. Okay. God wants us to be honest and open with him, even with our prayers to him. Okay. Sometimes we think of prayer. It's like, oh, Holy Father, great thou art in the heavens above. Let us be endowed with your goodness throughout the land. No. I mean, if you pray like that, that's beautiful. And God bless you if that's genuinely, you know. But that's not how God works with me, right? Okay. I've yelled at God. I don't understand this. I'm so frustrated. You know? He wants us to be that transparent with him because then he can move. Then he can change us. Then he can transform us. He can't change somebody who thinks they've got it all together. Right? Because none of us do. Sorry. Sorry if you got somebody on that pedestal. Boom. They're down. Okay? And we got to remember, in the midst of these trials, God does not want bad things to happen to us. Jesus did not put sickness on your body. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Okay? Where do you see Jesus doing that? You get cancer, you get healed. You get AIDS, you get healed. That's not the Jesus I served. He healed everybody that was, was open to him healing them. Right? Okay? So let's not let the enemy twist it for us because he wants to, he, his biggest goal besides stealing our hope is he wants to jack up the image of who God is. He wants to jack up the character of who God is, right? Because as long as we believe that he's like the Olympic, Olympic gods ready to take us out with this thunderbolt, how are we ever supposed to connect with that? Right? He wants to build all these walls between us and the Lord. And so what do we, where do we find our foundation? Where do we have, find our understanding of who he is? It's in here. And it's not just one scripture. It's the whole word of God. Okay, my youth pastor, this is pretty funny, and this is going to knock out any religious spirits in the place. He used to say, line upon line, like snorting lines. Am I the only one? It took you a minute. It's okay. It's all right. You're like, clearly you're not saying that. Okay. All right. Whatever you got to do to get this in you, Okay. So it's important. we got to get the full word of God in us. Okay? Because you, know you know why there's so much turmoil in the church today where people are disagreeing? It's because they don't know this. 
right? They're basing it on these like statistics and these ideas and these ideologies, right? People are serving a different Jesus. I don't know if you know that. They're serving the social justice warrior who's coming in to defend us. That's what the Jews were looking for back in the day. They're like, okay, Jesus, you're ready to take out Rome, right? We're ready. We're, re we're with you. That's not what he did. He had a better, bigger cause and a bigger call. Amen? All right. Everybody get the religious spirits out? Good. Okay. I get them too, so don't feel bad. All right. The next one is a huge one, is that why didn't God do it my way? Right? We got it all figured out. These are all the steps you need, Lord, to fix my life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Make the world better. <laughs> okay. But he's pretty clear about what he thinks about that. In Isaiah 55, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor, nor, are, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Okay? He sees the universal picture. Right? If any of us had our way, we'd probably be like, okay, a month of all this stuff, God, and then our world goes back to normal. Right? But no, he has a bigger picture of what he's trying to do. Um, next is besides getting angry with God, we get angry with people. It is your fault I am suffering. But honestly, we have a choice. We have a choice about the power we give other people to have over our lives, over our identity, over our mentality, over how we function. And the sooner we see that, the more we can be free. Because we're always living, well, my mom or my dad or my grandma or, you know, my boyfriend, my life was ruined and get stuck in that. We can never move forward. And God wants us to be free. Amen? The next one is my, one of my favorites because I've done it many times is self-pity. <laughs> right? I was talking about first service. Have you ever had a pity party? I mean, really? Pity party, party? Like you invite your friends all around and you have like a cake there and like some refreshments and maybe some cool music going on. It's usually kind of the violin, oh, you know, right? We get caught up in the self-pity trap of the enemy because as long as we're feeling sorry for ourselves, the enemy, we can't do anything for God, right? And so, and it's interesting enough, like in the midst of that, we're, we're not allowing God to use us. So the next thing that we do is we build walls around ourselves, right? I think that really refers to that heart of many will grow cold. I'm going to keep everybody at a distance, right? I'm not, I'm not going to let you hurt me. I'm not going to let you around me. And I'm not talking about healthy boundaries and healthy walls. We should have healthy boundaries and walls, but not those that keep us from sharing the love of Jesus with others, right? Next is we get angry with ourselves, I must have done something wrong to deserve this, right? These bad things happen in our lives. I must have not tithed enough or just the weird things the enemy, you didn't go to church last week, you know, <laughs> and this bad thing happens or I didn't pray enough today. All those are lies of the enemy, okay? We need to let God set us free from that idea today because our God is, no, is not a God of condemnation. There is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, Okay? When Jesus' blood is applied to our life, we are clean. We are whole. We're still working on our soul, RV, okay? <laughs> you know, you have an RV in your life too, I'm sure. But God has made us pure. In another thing, which I love our women's ministry, because we had Cindy come. Um, I forget Cindy's last name. Cindy Soros, come. Talk about a testimony of somebody that's gone through hard things. Um, and she shared about inner vows that we can make. You know, things like we say when we're a kid, I will never trust anyone like that again, right? Or I will always have a plan B for when God doesn't come through, right? We can make those vows when we're young and just get ourselves trapped by the enemy. But God's, God really wants us to come to a place of trusting him. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with some of your heart, all of your heart. That's right. Come on. And do not rely on your insight or understanding in all your ways. Know and acknowledge and recognize him, and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. You know, after Alex and I had gotten married, around the time, um, I was uh, involved at the church. I was the administrator, um, and uh, I was actually over the kids' ministry for about six years, involved about eight years. 
And um, we had gotten married, and I was so stoked. Like, we're going to, ha- you know, try starting ha- having a family, and I'm just so ready and all this stuff. And lo, be- lo-, lo and behold, we were able to get pregnant. And I was, we were stoked. We were going to keep it as a surprise because it was the first couple months and all that stuff. And then we went for our first appointment where they have, like, the little TV and all the fun little doodads that they <laughs> examine you with. And the nurse said to us, she goes, oh, um, there isn't a heartbeat. And I was not at all prepared for somebody to say that to me. It was like somebody kicked me in the gut. And I thought, I was like in denial. Like, surely, no, she, she, put on your glasses, lady. Like, no, that's not happening. And sure enough, there was no heartbeat. And, um, you know, we ended up over the process of several weeks losing the baby. And two weeks, or it was, no, two days before, after I lost the baby, uh, we had our kids' Christmas program. And guess who's in charge of the kids' ministry? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I was sitting there on my knees, you know, doing the little motions that you do with the kids and, uh, you know, just being broken, totally fragmented, you know, asking those questions. Why, God, I've been faithful. I've been serving you. I've been doing all the things. I've been serving other people's kids. Like, what's the deal? And literally in that moment, as I'm looking at these beautiful children worshiping Jesus, God revealed to me that I, ha- that I do have a baby and it's in heaven, yeah? And that the baby's name is Annabelle and that I will be re- reunited with her again. You know, we have this hope in the midst of the most painful sorrow and tragedies. We have the hope that Jesus is with us and, he- and I will meet her again, amen? You know, the things we go through, suffering is real, but let's not get that, let the enemy get any, any more glory and credit for that. And let's grab a hold of Jesus and go, okay, God, where is the good inside of this devastation? Where is the hope in the midst of this hopeless situation? Amen. You know, I had a choice to make in that moment. Am I going to just leave the church and be, take my toys and go home and go, God, I was faithful. I did all the things and, you, and I had still lost my baby. But in that moment, I said, okay, God. I literally verbalized this. I said, Lord, and I remember I was walking from the office and I was sobbing. And I said, Lord, I trust you. That's, and that's, in those moments, usually all we can do is just say, Lord, help, or Lord, I trust you. And can I tell you, I don't regret making that decision. Because now I have the hope and the joy that I'll be reunited with my daughter. Amen. Amen. It's amazing that things that are still in your heart, even though it's been a while. And now we also have beautiful, two beautiful children, too, so that's also a great blessing. Um, and so it's so important for us to remember hope is not a feeling. Hope is a person. And that person's name is Jesus. He's who we need to cling to in the storm. Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. In that room, when the nurse was giving us the terrible news, my Jesus was there sitting with me. He was weeping when I wept, right? He was holding my hand. He's with us in our darkest hour, holding us. John eleven twenty one 21 says, oh, this is the story of Lazarus. You know, another, another example of somebody who lost hope, right? It had been four days that Lazarus had been dead. And so he was tight with Jesus, and his sisters, Mary and Martha, were tight with Jesus. And they had asked him to come, and he hadn't come yet. And so he was dead. And literally, you know, Martha, or Mary was in that place. She's like, Lord, he would be healed if you would have come. Yeah? And what does it say Jesus did? He empathized with her. He didn't just go, okay, girl, get, o- get over yourself, whatever. No, he wept with her. Right? Even though he knew Lazarus was coming out of that tomb, He took that time to go, I'm here with you, sister. I feel what you feel. And don't think that I'm not touched by what you're going through. Don't think that God is not touched by what you're going through. Because he is. He cares about it. In the midst of that tragedy, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. He brought resurrection and redemption into that situation. And I'm telling you this morning... Jesus wants to bring the power of resurrection into the areas of your life that there's been death. And that doesn't just have to be a child or a person. That could be a dream. That could be a hope. That could be a desire of your heart. 
that you felt like died. You know, how did Jesus respond? He suffered too. If we ever had a question, did Christians suffer? Jesus suffered. <laughs> he was God. <laughs> okay. He was on the cross. And what was his response in that moment? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Okay, thank God I wasn't Jesus. Okay? I'd be like, it is on, angels, go. You're going to be tortured for five million years. And, I, and I, as I was saying this morning too, I bet if people's eyes would have been open to the supernatural, how many angels were poised, ready, they wouldn't have touched him with a 10-foot pole. But he chose to go there for us. And he chose to forgive us in the midst of it. Amen. Um, so this morning we are, we are encountering hope. Amen. The Lord is poised and ready to set us free. But the question is, how the heck do I surrender to hope? <laughs> Looks like that's great, Abby, but what do I do? First, we've got to recognize that God can bring good out of any situation. If we just allow him to, there's nothing too dark. There's nothing too bad that he can't bring good out of it. Romans 8, 28 said, and we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God and who are called according to his plan and purpose. The next thing we need to do is forgive. You know, maybe we need to forgive God. Maybe we need to forgive ourselves, or maybe we need to forgive other people that we've been just holding on to that hurt and that anger. You know, one of my favorite stories is about a missionary lady named Elizabeth Elliot. So her and her husband, Jim, went with several missionaries into South America to a tribe called the Aka Indians. This is like in the 40s or 50s. And um, they just went because they just felt called. And the, the men would, had an airplane, and they would fly over the tribes that had not received the gospel and drop food and stuff, trying to show them, we, we're friendly, we care about you, we're good and stuff. And so finally they got to the point where they were landing and interacting with the tribe, just the men, the women stayed back. And so they had ended up having a baby, uh, Jim and Elizabeth. And uh, Jim went out with the team for their next encounter and they were butchered to death by the tribe. So this is what's the most astounding and supernatural thing about this woman. In that moment where she's holding her child, her husband is gone. They're, they were on assignment for God. In the midst of her pain, she said, God, could you use me to help those people? That is supernatural, let me tell you. Because everything in us wants to tell all the reasons. God, we were faithful, we did all the, you know, all the reasons to be angry, to be upset, to be bitter, to take our toys and go home, right? And literally, because of her positioning of her heart in that moment, she not only got to interact with those people again, she moved into that tribe she ended up getting all of them saved. The people that butchered her husband became her friends. That is supernatural. And if you, I mean, that makes you believe in Jesus just right there. <laughs> and so literally, she was involved in transforming that tribe. And God didn't stop there with her. She ended up writing books that went around the world. She ended up doing radio programs that went around the world. And this is pre-Joyce Meyer's time, okay? This is the 40s or 50s. This wasn't like, women, yay, be on the pulpit, you know? God promoted her sovereignly because she was willing to not get caught up in her, the horror story that she went through. But she said, God, you have to make more of this. You have to use this for good. Amen. Um, next, we need uh, to let go, renounce of control and fear, and ask God to fill us with his love and teach us to trust him. We need to be taught how to trust him. We can't just say, like, oh, I trust God. You ha we have to be taught. And then also we need to ask God for healing. You know, in this hour, it's kind of come to the point where it's like put up or shut up. Right? The line of demarcation of where we stand, whether we're for God or not for God, is really, really clear. And it's getting clearer every day. And, and more than being preoccupied where everyone else is on that line, we need to be preoccupied with where we are at. Because if we get right, you watch the other people that start lining up because the love of God and the glory of God is functioning in you. We always get it, get it backwards. We want to do it in our own flesh. We wanna, I'm going to convince you to believe or see what I see versus going, I'm going to see so much of him. I'm going to embrace so much of him. I'm just dumping out God's love and goodness everywhere I go. And they are begging 
to know what we know. Amen? So I want to pray for us this morning. I told you, God told me this morning that he wants to resurrect some things. He wants to heal some things. So I want everybody to close your eyes and just posture yourself to receive from the Lord this morning. Lord God, we just thank you so much for who you are. You're just so amazing, and you're so good. Like we sang this morning, you're, it's just, you're too good to not believe, God. And so we just thank you, Father God. Lord, we just hold out the hurts, the wounds, the death that the enemies brought in our life. And we just picture you right now in that scenario where we've suffered, where we hurt, that Jesus, you were right there with us. You were holding our hand. You were holding us close. You were whispering in our ear that you loved us and that you're here. And so, Lord, we just ask, Lord, for just healing in the deep places of our soul where the enemy has just wreaked havoc. And, Lord, we just choose right now as an act of obedience to just forgive. Just under your breath, just say, I forgive, whether it's God, others, yourself. Lord, we thank you, Father. But we just choose to forgive. We choose to release those things, God, because we want to hold on to you with both hands, both arms. Lord, we thank you, Father. Lord, I pray you just saturate each and every one of us with your love. Just fill this place with your glory and your presence, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Heal our souls. Restore our souls, God. And Lord God, we just hold up those things that have died. Whatever that looks like. A business, a person, a relationship, a dream. We just hold it out to you, God. And Lord, we just declare resurrection power over those things. I thank you that you're the God that makes all things new. You're the restorer of the broken. Lord, you bind up the brokenhearted. Lord, you set the captives free. You're a friend that's closer than a brother, that you are faithful and mighty and holy and worthy. And Lord, we repent for in any way how we believed a lie that you are something that you are not. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you that the days are coming soon, for like, just like we sang this morning, where we're going to see those types of miracles. Lord, dead, dead being raised, prodigals returning, cancer being removed, metal dissolving, Limbs growing, God. Mental health being restored. Will we grab a hold of those promises? And we believe that we will see them, God. Will we thank you, Holy Spirit? We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just pour out your spirit more and more in this place, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just even break the power of fear in Jesus' name. That literally some of you, it's been hard to sleep at night because of anxiety that's been hitting your soul because of things that have happened in the past. So we break the power of that in Jesus' name. Lord, we just pray your perfect love will cast out all and any fear right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that you're teaching us to be in awe of you. We're so full of the fear of the Lord, we don't have room for any other fear. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, your word says you give your beloved sleep. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And I pray for those that have had strained relationships or broken relationships. I thank you for restoration of those things. And I thank you that you're teaching us how to position ourselves 
in those situations where we don't know what to do or to say or not say. Sometimes, Lord, I thank you, Father, for restoring relationships in this place. Lord, jobs that have been lost or incomes that have been lost through everything that's been going on. I thank you for restoration of more than enough. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for breakthrough. Thank you for deliverance right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Love your presence, God. Thank you, Lord, that you're, like you said in, in the word, Lord, peace be still to every storm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And maybe you're in this place and you're like, I don't know about this Jesus you talk about or I've heard about him or I had some weird experiences at church or whatever. Um, I just encourage you, if you feel that pressing on your heart, you know what, I need to get that hope. I need to get that, that Jesus in my life. Um, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now to invite him. And I'm going to have everybody pray together. Dear Jesus, I invite you to come into my life as Lord and Savior, and I believe that you died on the cross and paid for my sins, and that I'm made pure by your blood. In Jesus' name, amen.